So that's a normal invoicing process where we do the work first. And oftentimes it's more of a job cost kind of system, a specialized type of system where we, where we don't know exactly what we're selling, right? Because it's, it's not all the same in nature. There's some customization involved in it. Now, then when you get to longer term projects, when you get to bigger projects, then oftentimes you're going to make an estimate. So I'm going to make an estimate of what I think it's going to cost. I don't really know because maybe it's a construction progress or, or maybe it's a legal, uh, a legal issue that's going to take a long time or an accounting issue or a tax thing that's going to take a long time. So we'll make an estimate and then uh, we're going to invoice after we do the work oftentimes. But if it's going to be a long term process, we're going to be doing construction, for example, for many months is the classic example but it could also be in a legal case. It's going to take a long time. So therefore we, we might have to bill kind of as we go for this one kind of uh, issue in a, like a job cost type of system, system. same for uh, like a tax type of system. So in that case, the question is, I'm going to possibly be invoicing as I go. So now I'm going to be requesting payments, even though the job is not completed. So we have a revenue recognition problem. The invoice is a great tool for us to basically uh, collect money from the customer because the invoice can be sent out and it's the easiest tool to convert the invoice to receipt of the payment. But if you've got a longer term job, then the question is, should you be recording revenue at the point in time that you issue the invoice because you haven't actually completed the job? Or in some cases, you might actually be, be requesting money before you start the job as a down payment on the on the job. So so we have this couple things that we need to be tracking. One is the invoice is a good tool to request payment so we can track payment of the money, the invoice requesting payment, easy facilitation of the payment to be converted to to uh, to cash. And we track the accounts receivable so that we can follow up on the payments that have not yet uh, been received with the invoice. But then we have the revenue recognition issue. If the invoice was sent out for, for work that had been done in the past, uh, then, then we should recognize the revenue on an accrual concept basis when we issue the invoice and that's normal and that will work perfectly. But if we're not going to do the work until the future or we are currently doing the work, then the idea would be, well, maybe we, we shouldn't be recognizing the revenue at the point in time we send out the invoice because we haven't yet, we haven't yet done the work. We haven't completed the job, which is usually what needs to be done for a revenue recognition principle. So those are the concepts that, that come into play with the progress invoicing. We have, we have the issue of, I'd like to use the invoice to collect the money, but collecting the money could be separate from uh, the revenue, the revenue recognition uh, concepts. So we'll take a, a look at a couple kind of examples. You can also have a situation where maybe you did the work in the past, but they're going to be paying you like in installment kind of situations. Now, if they're going to be paying you like in installments, again, you'd, you'd kind of like to set it up as as a loan uh, type of situation. However, using progress invoicing can be can be useful because then you'd like to use the invoice to request the payments on a periodic uh, type of basis even though the revenue recognition becomes kind of an, an issue that way because in, in that case you did the work already you've, you've already done the work and then you're going to be paid uh, in, in like installments in the future if you just record the invoice the revenue is going to be recognized when you get when you get paid as opposed to kind of when you did the work, which you've already which you've already done the work. So you've got these issues. This invoice is great for collecting revenue, but you've got a difference between the revenue recognition concept and uh, and the billing time. So generally what's going to happen with the invoice is you're going to go up top and and we're going to make an estimate. And then once once we have the estimate, we can basically uh, enter the invoice to pull in from the estimate. So I'll just show an example here and then I will delete it so it doesn't get in the way of our practice problem. So you don't have to enter this on your side if you don't want to, but I'm just gonna say we have an estimate 
and let's make a new customer. I'm gonna say it's customer one. I just made up a customer, customer one. And this happens on 427.23, okay. And then down below, I'm gonna say that we have, let's just keep it with the hours and we'll put 100,000 on the hours. And there's gonna be our estimate. So I'm gonna say save and close. So that doesn't actually record uh, anything to the financial statements. It's just an estimate. So if the estimate is accepted, then we might bill you know, the client an invoice for the estimate. So then when I invoice, what's gonna happen is I'll get this option. So I can say invoice customer number one, and now I've got this option uh, pulling in from the estimate. So I'm gonna say, I wanna pull that information in and then I've got my choices on how I want to pull it in. I can pull in the entire estimate, but if I'm doing a progress invoicing type of system, I might do some percentages. So we might have come up with an agreement prior to this that I'm going to be charging you based on the based on the percent here. So I then I then might use the percent method or I might use some kind of custom field, custom amount for each line item. So the percent might be fairly common. If I told them that I'm gonna be billing them 30% or whatever, then I can pull this information 30%. And every time the invoice comes up, I can then I can then pull in the next percent going forward until we've completely uh, billed out the estimate. Now, the issue of course here is that when I record this transaction, what's gonna happen is it's gonna record revenue at that point in time and accounts receivable. And then if the question is, is it proper for me to record that 30,000 of revenue because I may not have completed the job. And if you have a long-term job, even under an accrual concept, sometimes there's deviations from the normal revenue recognition principle, which is that we don't record revenue until the job's done. But if you have a long construction job or something like that, we might move to a percentage of completion kind of concept, for example, so that we can recognize a portion of the revenue basically as we go. And that, that's some of the issues that we'll get into in future presentations.